All right. Hello, hello. Sorry for the uh, confusion on the time. I made the original ones at 9.30, and then I made all of these at 9. I kind of forgot I did that until uh, this morning. So um, if you were coming from Lair Streamers, uh, you probably still saw 9 a.m. You've probably been waiting 10 minutes or so. Apologies for that. Um, I've updated all of them. They're going to be at a uh, quarter past at 9.15 Eastern. Uh, so the next few days this week. So today, tomorrow, uh, and Thursday. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get, let's get started here. Um, there were some changes that I made over the last, I guess, since the last stream. So not many, but a couple. Uh, so let's just kind of at a real high level, catch up on those. I really honestly haven't spent that much time on this off stream. I was a little ambitious thinking I could do a lot of it in a week, um, but kind of messing with Tailwind UI and of course learning some new things, which we'll see today, um, always take a little longer than you think. And you know, just as a tangent, like that's always what makes a project take longer is like this idea that, hey, I'm gonna work on this stuff um, and I'm gonna get this done, but then you start like doing, you know, all sorts of interesting things, uh, you know, using the new fancy, and it just ends up taking like way longer. And I think the original idea was probably not to use any fancy things beyond, you know, Tailwind UI, which is fancy in appearance, but I can just copy and paste, uh, you know, the code. So I wouldn't necessarily categorize that as fancy um, in regards to something like Livewire, which we're gonna try to use today. So anyway, uh, oh, hey, Simon, Samuel, Ryan, another Samuel, double Samuels, thanks. Daryl, how's everybody doing? Uh, so anyway, since last time, I've done a little bit of work, not much, probably like less than two hours. Um, so over the weekend, I separated the dashboard layout. We talked about uh, what we wanted that to, to look like last stream. We'll see that here in a second. I made it, uh, just a couple cedars uh, last night uh, just to make demoing stuff uh, easier. Um, one thing about this is I actually changed the name uh, I removed the database cedar, like the default one, and changed this to demo cedar. I kind of like doing that high level, um, like make like a demo cedar, make like a test cedar uh, or something, and then I call some individual cedars from there. So like kind of the traditional cedars to seed certain models or tables will still be individual cedars, but I kind of like having that high level thing, much like a layout in um, you know, like your blade resources, right? You'll have like a layout and you might have a couple different layouts, but then they all extend maybe even a base um, layout or something. So I like kind of having a couple of those. I do keep the database cedar, the default one for convenience. If my application actually has things that would always be seeded, maybe like, you know, city names or country names or, you know, state names for America or whatever, you know, if there's things like that, those would of course go in database cedar, but since I don't have any of those yet, I just kind of renamed it for demo. And this demo really just creates Ashley and I as a user and creates um, like our uh, wedding back in October. Um, so just a quick way to kind of get um, data, but talk about a little bit of what I did off stream there. And then finally the tweak the events, again, just pulling in stuff from Laravel UI. So let's take a look at kind of where um, where things are and yeah for those that are new let's um, let's bring everything back up so PHP artisan artisan tinker or no sorry PHP artisan uh, serve is what we want so um, project a uh, is just you know silly name for um, a project I'm working on for Ashley, my wife. Uh, and it's basically like a photo sharing thing. And it's just something we were talking about randomly after our wedding, like, oh, it'd be nice if um, people could upload the photos that they took and not have to do like a hashtag on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, Instagram. Um, you know, we just got kind of immediate access to those like in a centralized location. And I was like, oh, I could build something like that. And I don't think she believed me. So I'm, uh, I'm building it. And uh, we were gonna use it at our, our vacation we took. The goal was to kind of um, surprise her the vacation we took uh, the other week. But um, again, a little ambitious to build all of this in a week. 
So now my goal is maybe for Christmas, uh, the Saturday to send, um, send her a link just, you know, as a little stocking stuffer. So it's pretty close. Um, we've just been pulling things in from uh, Tailwind UI. Just we used um, Blueprint. You can go back and watch some of the earlier streams. So, but we basically um, can log in now. And again, if we look at um, this, we should just be password if all my seeders are working correctly. Yes. Okay. Cool. And of course, we know that that's a bad password. <laughs> so I dropped in um, this dashboard. This was one of the dashboard uh, commits we were talking about a minute ago. This separate dashboard layout. So that was a bit of a dashboard. Again, I haven't customized or added any JavaScript yet. And then this dashboard would effectively show um, the events. So I just need to make these <clears throat> dynamic. That was something I was working on last night. Um, just kind of tweaks for dashboard to to demonstrate. So I just need to drop the names here and, and make them a little bit more um, about the venue or the event. Uh, so something like, you know, Jason and Ashley's wedding, maybe a little picture of where it's going to be or, or our engagement photo here is the avatar. Uh, the date might come over here. I'm still kind of playing around with what I want this to look like, which is why I kind of have two separate cells. I don't know if I want like the last five images, little thumbnails here or what, but the point is you would effectively click on one of these and you would be taken to um, the event. And right now I'm just kind of hard coding this. So this is the part I want to work on today. Um, so this is actually a little bit dynamic. It is using the slug from the event to kind of nested resource that photo and the ability to create it. Um, and so this is where a user or an attendee of the event would come and, and be able to drop in photos to add. And then I, I kind of left some of these settings down here. Um, again, these are all just pulled in from Tailwind UI, but there may be something where you want this to be private. You only want it to be shared with, um, you know, the, the owners of the event, if you will, the creators of the event or whatever. Um, in this case, you know, me and Ashley, um, or something like that. So I, I don't know if you'd need all of these, but I've just kind of left them as part of the form because I could see you maybe adding photos um, if this were a public, like if, if when you created the event, if you allowed anyone to see them because you made it a public event, um, you know, maybe those certain photos you would want to share publicly for some reason. Maybe it's her and I kissing or something. I have no idea, just, just as an example. So I'd like to try to bring this form uh, to life today. Um, so again, all this kind of came from Tailwind UI. I'd like to be able to hit save and have at least the photos um, being able to be uploaded uh, and kind of added to the event. And I was looking um, at Livewire and just kind of watching some of the videos uh, that they have, which are just super awesome. I, I definitely saw when Caleb was working on these, you know, over the years, but um, to kind of get in and actually start watching them as, as a user of Livewire. Um, definitely super cool concept to like add the videos right into the docs. Now, in all honesty, I have not used Livewire before, uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm watching the videos. Um, so to that point, I don't know if I should try to muddle through um, you know, the drag and drop um, upload, or if I should just build this form, I should probably just build this form to work first and then look into putting it into Livewire. I don't know, for those of you in the audience that are more familiar with Livewire, let me know kind of what the best approach is or what you wanna see. If you wanna see me muddle through setting up a form in Livewire from total scratch, um, I can try that. I can't guarantee I'll get very far in, you know, the next 40 minutes, but glad to do that. So I'll, I'll leave it to poll the audience. I'm going to go ahead and kill, um, serve there. Let's push origin head, I guess. I think this is just a whip of, yeah, just a whip of the photo upload form. So what we're seeing here, I may force push that later, but if you want to, so yeah, again, let me know in chat what you want to see. And I'm just going to kind of take a peek um, at this bottom form here. So we can just tighten up this form to what we're actually care about saving. 
Uh, in fairness, whatever we do add here is not something... I, I could see a radio button here of like, who can see it, um, you know, or maybe like a, an ask, like an ask for review. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and clean those up a little bit. So let's get into project A and it's here. All right, so let's drop these. We probably don't want notifications. This is probably more like visibility or something. Again, I'm gonna we'll clean up all this wording later as uh, you know, of course, Ashley gets the chance to review it, but let's just call this like visibility for now. And we'll leave that alone. And then um well, actually, we'll just say, uh, let us know who should see these photos. And then probably something, oh, that's all one thing. So let's, let's drop this field set. And yeah, let's drop this top field set and kill the padding here because we already have it there. And now this is going to be like, I don't even know if you need this inner portion. It kind of could just go straight down to the every one, every whatever. So yeah, I think I might just do, what is this? I might just drop this, leave that. Again, we won't need that. And this would be something like um, everyone. And then it's like, I don't know, just me or just Jason and Ashley. Again, that's not going to be the same name for everyone. I'll have to think of what to say there, like the owners. And then um, I don't know why, but I guess you could have like an only me kind of thing. Again, I don't, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but or if that should even be an option but all this is gonna have to get um, changed a bit. But I think for the time being, let's go ahead and make this one like checked. All right, oh, I killed the page, whoops. PHP artists, artisan serve. All right, so we got this visibility back. Um, so I probably will keep something like this, but the wording, of course, needs to be tweaked. But it is functional, and it defaults to everyone. So I think this is a good start to kind of get in and actually be uploading files and saving this form. So let's see what the consensus was in the chat. Build the form out first. Get it working first. OK, sounds like, sounds like that's what we should do. OK. So create is going to go, of course, to the photo controller. And this should get rid of, so store is what we care about. Request photo create validated. OK, so photo store, authorized true. You're pretty much always authorized. OK, so attendee is required. We don't have attendee ID in the form. That's a little bit annoying. Where would we get attendee ID? And the other thing is you get event due to the nested resources. So it's not gonna be, it's not actually gonna be in the form. I don't, I don't really like doing a lot of hidden data. So let's, let's actually clean this up. Cause you'd have to, You'd have to try to hack the form another way, but that's all going to be handled later with like authorization. I don't think that's really part of this form. So I think what we probably want is just for now, the photo, uh, it's required uh, and it would be an image. And let's just say something like max would be like 10 meg megabyte. Is it just M or 10 MB? Let's find out. Laravel.com. 
validation and then where are the available roles there they are I think it's max where's max yeah size rule I thought you could file size in kilobytes for files size corresponds to the file in kilobytes okay so what would that be like 10 48 0 something like that I don't know I wish you could just say M that would be awesome uh, okay and then also too actually I saw when we were playing around in here there were mime types oh I think image handles that right image just handles the the mime types it says file must be yeah JPEG okay cool awesome okay so that's handled and then this actually changes from reviewed to visibility and this would be like a rule in what would that be oh doesn't Laravel now have like an enum thing yeah I think they have like a cool enum thing now that you can do and also when you're validating enum yes they do sweet service status yes here we go this is what we want enums are only available in PHP 8.1 oh whoops the enum rule is a class-based rule that validates whether the okay so we can't use enums just yet I'm not running 8.1 on my machine but I could run it on the server eventually but for now we'll make sure that the rule uh, in is basically like everyone um, owner and then or well owner is kind of like the one who uploaded it um, now we got to come up with this name <laughs> event and then owner maybe how about coordinator so everyone coordinator or the owner who uploaded the image I think that's fine and then we had reviewed in here which I think we still probably want so let's do reviewed that's not actually submitted though on photo store request reviewed kind of happens again underneath the cover so I think this is all that the form is actually gonna submit so we have a couple things here first of all I don't think we called it photo um, I think we just called it path which is kind of lame um, just because we get a photo though that doesn't mean that's actually what we're storing right because we have to manage the photo upload so I think calling it photo is fine for the front end but visibility is definitely something that we don't have in our photo so let's fix that I'm gonna add um, visibility here and let's go to our photo table and we're gonna need to add a string for visibility here okay cool so there's that and then let's go back to our form and kind of fix up these names now that we've landed on them so label for cover photo we probably let's not use anywhere else it's interesting choose your photo for file upload ID file upload okay so we can, let's change this to photo and then down here we need to change this to visibility um, name push notifications oh I always forget radio buttons I think you make them all the same name right visibility visibility yeah that's right okay yeah so these names are a little bit wrong let's let's just take a minute and fix that everyone um, and then we call this coordinator and we call this owner and to that point um, we probably need to change these values so input type radio 
where is our value? There isn't one. Okay, so let's fix that too. So radio uh, value here is going to be everyone. And all, all this is kind of ugly, which is why I want to use those enums. Uh, this will be coordinator. And this will be um, owner. Okay. Everyone coordinated owner. Okay, so this should submit. Let's go down here and let's just dd um, request form validated. All right, let's fire the old, or well, we're actually gonna have to, uh, let's see, fresh, yeah. So we, I can't just run MFS because I actually am not using the default seeder, but you can get overcome that by using the seeder um, option and then passing in demo seeder. So this should rebuild the application uh, with the seed data and of course uh, rerun our photos table, which picks up that new thing. And I changed the migration directly because you know, this isn't deployed yet. I'm still working on it. There's no version of this other than on my machine. There's no other developers working on it. So I'm not gonna like waste time creating a migration. I'm just gonna keep editing these original table uh, schemas uh, until I kind of get to where I wanna go. So PHP artisan serve. I'm hearing some chat. Let's check it out. Uh, a venter, nice. <laughs> yeah, I think coordinator's okay. I mean, those are the, they're not really the coordinators, I guess, but they're they're the people who are managing the event. So, okay, so I'm still logged in because the browser knows that. Uh, let's go back to uh, event. Okay. Oh, photo is just a blank page. So that's kind of lame. It's create. Here we go. So now I should be able to add um, a photo. So let's go find one. Nothing too risque. Um, Here's a little PNG of this shift live bit. Oh, well, psh, drag and drop, of course, doesn't work yet. <laughs> okay, so let's choose a photo. And there it is. All right, and then let's just change this to the coordinators and hit save. Page expired. I probably don't have the CSRF token on there because I copied it from, no, I don't. All right, let's fix that. Oops. Uh, at, come on now. At CSRF. There we go. That should handle that. Just leave a little line break there to make sure it's all happy. And go back. Refresh. So let's change that to that. Let's choose a photo, not photos. Save. Oh, it just submitted back to itself. Don't have, don't have any validation on here. Something failed on the validation. I bet. We need to drop in um, a nasty little validation errors bit, and I'll clean that up tonight because that's kind of a lame, a lame bit. Let's see if uh, Laravel's got any like, yeah, displaying the validation errors. Here we go. Let's just do this real fast. It won't look pretty, but. At least we'll see what error is occurring. None of these matter, so let's just drop that. All right, let's go back, refresh, choose that photo. Third time's a charm, right? The photo must be an image. Did I not call this the right thing? Label photo, input photo file, name photo. That should be good. Oh, did we call it something else? No, we called it photo. Why is it not an image? It's a PNG. JPEG, PNG, what's wrong? Photo is not an image. That's kind of strange. Let's find a JPEG in here somewhere. Here's an old little bit there. I think that was when I was working on Taylor's table. Photo must be an image. 
Okay, it's getting a little ridiculous. Something's not wired up right here. ID name photo. Let's see what we get. Um, let's see what we're getting here. What is it? This dot all, I guess? Let's see what we're getting when we submit this. Photo is at 1x PNG. That should be correct. Oh, I know what's going on. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I should have checked the chat. It's not a multi-part form. Uh, see? Super, super helpful. Um, all right. It's uh, in, encrypt type, multi-part form data. There we go. Let's go back, back, refresh. All right. Copying that stuff is super helpful to copy all that stuff, but then you kind of forget all those little nuances that if you were building it, you know, by hand to go back and add. Okay, cool. We now have a photo, which is a uploaded file which in turn has all the little pieces that we want. So let's drop this DD now, and we will refresh. It should preserve the session, and now we have an uploaded file. Okay, so we have all the pieces of data that we need. Let's finish storing this um, appropriately. Okay, so once we got all our naming right, that's pretty easy peasy. So we can't just use validated here. We actually need to probably not only do something with that file, but we'll need to kind of eke out this data a bit. So let's let's clean this up. And just for now, we're going to do event ID um, is, of course, the event ID. Uh, we'll need to do, I think we called it path, which is going to be like, you know, uploaded path. We can make that prettier here in a second. Uh, reviewed is going to be false. That'll be dependent upon, you know, authorization levels and so forth. Uh, and then finally, visibility can be um, request input, not that input visibility. And we'll also need attendee ID. For now, I'm just going to hard code. I'm just going to hard code the um, request user ID for now. Instead of hard coding one, which would be me, let's at least say, look, whoever's using the system is because right now there's no concept of like attendees. I'm going to hopefully be working on that tomorrow or uh, or Thursday. Okay, we need to handle this. And I don't know if we want to go to index or not, but we'll find out. Let's finish this uploaded path part. And what I want to do right now is let's just put it on the file system. Um, you know, we're going to use the S3, or not, we're eventually going to use S3, but right now we can use the storage disks and everything. So really at that point, it should just be flipping a driver um, to make it go to S3. So let's go take a look at storage, um, just to make sure I have it all set up. It should come out of the box with public. Um, that should be all I need to do. But I think there's even like an uploaded file section. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, request file avatar store in avatars. Nice. And it gives us back the path. So that's that's pretty easy. So let's keep scrolling here. Uh, you can also call put file on the storage facade to perform the same file operation as the example above. Okay specifying a file name I don't think I want. If you want the file name to automatically be assigned, you may use the store as method, which retrieves the path and file name. If you do not want, oh, okay. We do want it to create one for us. Specifying a disk, it's just the second parameter it looks like, or of course you can use store as. Okay, so I think I think the easiest thing to do here would just be like uploaded path is equal to um, photo and store it for now in like 
let, let's go ahead and make our own photos path. That way it's really easy to just change the driver all in code. So let's go to file systems, I think. So local is the default. It would just store an app. Um, let's just copy public for now. And let's make this be photos. Or maybe this is even something like event photos. And let's store it in app public. Well, no, let's make it its own photos. That's a local driver photos. It would be really cool if we're probably it'd be really nice if you could um, tweak this URL dynamically based on the model because like really what I would like this to be is like event and then like Ash, you know, Ashley, it'd be like the slug, like Ashley, Jason, you know, wedding 2021 or, you know, whatever unique thing there. It'd be nice to be able to do those um, that way. Of course, I could always, I guess, add more to the URL, but I don't know. Is there a way to do that? Like, let's take a second and find out. I don't think that'd be in file upload. Let's look at storage and see if there's obtaining instances on demand disks. I don't think it's that. Custom file systems, maybe? Let's try. Oh, no, it's not that. Let's look at on demand disks. Probably not that either. If your application interacts with multiple disks, storage facade, okay. I don't know. Does anyone in the audience know? Is it possible to tweak that URL in some kind of dynamic way? based on the model like I don't I mean obviously if this site you know got some traffic like even if it just had two events like you're gonna have a crap load of photos in there um, I, I mean I guess you can always just make make one on demand and then each time just change the disk up you know like it's a little ugly but like each event could have a disk that it makes kind of on demand. I don't know. I'm sure I could figure it out. For now, we'll just put it in, in here. Um, so yeah, that seems good. And I think, I think to make this work, you have to link everything up. So you have to say like PHP artisan, I think it's like disk or storage link, I think. Yeah, there we go. So I think you have to do something like that. Although that probably didn't make the one for photos. PHP artisan. Let's see what we have under storage. Just link. Okay. So I probably have to also make make der storage app photos. All right. Let's just see if this works. PHP artisan serve. All right, let's go back to where we were. I'm just gonna hit refresh. Okay, it kicked us back to the index page. We should probably make this a little cleaner. Let's see if it actually saved anything. So let's go to storage, um, app, photos. Hey, there it is. Hey. Okay, cool. So it did upload it. So let's just clean up this index page real fast. And that might just be where we stop today. And then I might read up more on Livewire tonight. Or, you know, I don't know, again, let me know in the audience, I can try to start installing Livewire. Um, just with the last 10 minutes or so, we'll see. Uh, okay, so what we're we gonna do, let's, let's go back to resources, views, not layouts, uh, photo index. Let's bring this template back to life. And this is now dashboard is our new template. And we could say something here like, um, what does photo controller have? It gets a vent, 
and it should have all the photos. So we could just do something here like um, at, we could just say like, this is really ugly, but we just, for now, I'll clean this up, but we'll say like uh, event name. And then here we could just do um, for uh, each photos as photo and then end for each each did I call it photos I did right yeah good let's just go side by side here for a second or well we don't need that anymore it's called photos and then here we might just say something like um, let's just do an a href to the photo URL, or of course that has to be, that's kind of the last piece is I want to get, um, I don't think you can just say photo URL. You have to, you have to interact through the storage uh, facade, which we can do. Uh, and let's just do photo um, path, I think for now. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting all my little mustaches everywhere. Let's do that. And then I think here you have to say something like storage um, disk would be uh, photos. And then you would get uh, the photo, or not get, you would, here's you would do URL. And then here you have to pass in the path, I believe. I believe that's what we want. We're gonna find out. Okay, uh, where did we forget a closing mustache, I'm sure, somewhere? What do we do here? Storage disk URL. Oh yeah, let's close that out, shall we? Cool, and then if we click that, we don't see it. And that's probably because of that. Oh, that's kind of interesting. It also doubled up photos. I guess it automatically puts that in the disk. That's interesting. So we could fix that. But then the other thing is um, that symlink, you know, probably doesn't exist for photos. Um, yeah, I bet we can go find that out by just going to public storage. Yeah, it just links up storage in general. So either my path information is wrong or storage only links, only symlinks to app somehow. I bet if we looked at the info Let's just go to the command line. LS LA public. Yeah, see it only goes into public. We would have to make another one here called like, you know, event photos or something. So that sub pathing probably gets a little bit weird. This would end up being like event and then it's symlink to app photos, which has the events underneath it. So yeah, it is interesting to me that I feel like artisan storage link, it should have, it should have, in my opinion, it should have looped over any, anything that was a public storage folder. So something, I'll have to dig into the code, but something about the way in which I mapped this, I think since it's not under public or something like, in my opinion, that command should go in to this read this configuration, look at anything that's local, and if it has a public visibility, like create a symlink for it based on this data. But maybe because this wasn't public or something, it, it didn't do it. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. If anybody knows, let me know. Okay, so I think for now though that uh, this works. So let's, let's just kind of add this stuff in. So it, it does upload the file path. We can probably condense that code later. Um, all this looks good. Oh, my little picture in pictures. Okay, so yeah, we definitely want visibility to be set. Um, we added the photos driver, which probably needs to be cleaned up, but again, it, it, is, it is functional. Um, we definitely need a, a prettier error messaging. So there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna have to clean up tonight, but Let's spend just like the last five minutes here just taking a quick peek at Livewire. Okay, 
Yeah, I think this is good. Um, so ability to upload, or well, let's just say um, basic photo upload. All right, let's see what's going down in the chat. The link pap mapping for files is something which confuses me every time I touch file uploads. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, I definitely, I think there's some areas that, yeah, if your head's not super in it like it, there's a couple gotchas there. Okay, let's just go like five more minutes and let's go back to Livewire. I'm going to keep watching these screencasts, but let's go to the docs and just see kind of what we need to get started. So of course we would just require Livewire, include um, JavaScript on every page. Okay, of course. We create a component, so in our case it's probably like a, you know, a photo upload component or whatever. And then let's add some text to the view so that see something tangible. Sure, we've seen this demo a hundred times in all of Caleb's uh, talks, so this is cool. Okay, so here's the component is where we start, of course, adding things. So let's, let's just take a quick look. Okay, so all that should be fine. We would, of course, include Livewire. We would bring in that stuff, publish the config file, publish the front end assets, configure the asset base URL. Okay, that's probably fine. That's it. So next we go into making components. Okay, so let's let's just let's just follow this down here for a second. So we're going to install Livewire. We're going to add our scripts. So this is where we can go to that base layout. So here, uh, in right before stack head, we'll do Livewire styles, uh, Livewire scripts. So it's not going to like any of this since. And I wonder if this should be before or after anything else. I'm, I'm going to say after, probably. Alternatively, you can use this syntax. OK, that's fine. I like the ats. That's cool. All right, publish the config file, it says. OK. All right. Do we need to publish the config file? See what config, uh, but some users require more config. You can publish. Okay, so I probably don't. I don't like. <laughs> it's no secret. I don't like config files. So unless I'm really going to be changing something, I'm. I'm curious if I even need to publish this. So I'm just going to back that off. We can always republish it. Publishing the front end assets. If you prefer the JavaScript assets to be served by your web server and not through Laravel, if you prefer the JavaScript assets to be public to be served by your web server, not through Laravel. I don't understand that. To keep the assets up to date, avoid issues in future updates. We highly recommend adding the command. So do I, it's a little unclear, do I have to do this or not? If you prefer the JavaScript apps has to be served by your web server, not through Laravel. I don't really understand, I mean, I understand what that means technically, but I, there's not enough information here to know why I would choose one over the other. So I'm gonna skip that too. Configuring the asset base, okay, by default, Laravel serves its JavaScript portion library Joseph from the following route. Okay, fine. The actual script tag generates defaults to this. There are two scenarios that will cause this default. You publish your library assets and are now serving from subfold. Okay, I see now. Your app is hosted on a non-root path on your domain. Okay, I see. To solve either of these. Okay, so I don't think we need to do anything else there. So now I think it's a matter of probably needing to actually get in and make a component for that form. So I think this is where I'll probably stop. I don't think I'm going to commit any of this. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. OK, so it looks like in the chat, um, looks like we don't have to publish any of those things. So I'm just going to skip that for now. 
I think what I'll do is at least do PHP artisan serve and let's bring this up and let's just inspect and we should see um, Livewire styles. Okay, so it just, okay, I see it. It dumps them in line, I see, okay. And again, just a little bit of that in the docs would have been helpful. So instead of, you know, being published or, or in your HTML, you can make them an asset. So that makes that makes more sense now. Um, and I guess the same thing here, it pulls in Livewire with a little after, after bit there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, what do we have here? My default is just adding, cool. Okay, so I think everything we did is fine. This is clearly publishing everything. And I think we, you know, through hacking around, figured out the answer to the question of the difference between like, publishing these with the publish command versus just letting the tags do them. And that's, you know, inline styles uh, versus gives, just give you a little more control so you can get like browser caching or CDN or whatnot. So, okay, cool. Well, I think what I'm gonna do tonight is I'll go back and clean up um, some of these things we, we went kind of quick on. I'll get this actually loading the image um, and then Maybe tomorrow we'll spend a little bit of time actually implementing the live wire stuff if I can learn uh, enough about it over the next several hours. So thank you all for joining live, muddling uh, through some of this with me, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow. Again, uh, 9.15, that should be updated in layer streamers now, but um, just 15 minutes later than, than what I originally scheduled. So thanks again, see you all tomorrow.